Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. And welcome to our morning meditation. I tell you, whoo, we are changing over from our free conference to our Zoom. And so uh, we are actually in um, both. Uh, both places so we are still on free conference for those who are logged in and then we are also on zoom but we are just excited that you are here and we are able to give god the praise the honor and the glory for Amen. those who are still on um the free conference um you can um text me after our morning meditation 302-740-2295 Five two two nine five to make sure that you get the information so you can join us on our Zoom. All right, but listen, we are excited. God is here. You are here, and we are going to have a beautiful time on today in our gathering. Father, we thank you so much for your love, your grace, your mercy, and we especially thank you for your gift of Jesus Christ, your only Son who yes. you gave to us so that we are able to have life eternal. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you adoration. In Jesus' matchless name, with thanksgiving, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Well, on today, we are so delighted to have a guest presenter um, one of my Bible school students, and it is none other than Minister Marilyn Collins from Bethlehem Baptist Church in Virginia. And so we are delighted to have you share with us on today, Lady Marilyn. So Thank I you. am going to turn it over to you. It is all yours. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Dennery, for giving me this opportunity to present our morning meditation. Our meditation is titled, Jesus Brings Gifts. And my scripture reference will come from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. It is my prayer that you can hear me clearly, and I'm going to proceed. This is how Jesus Christ was born. A young woman named Mary was engaged to Joseph from King David's family. But before they were married, she learned that she was going to have a baby by God's Holy Spirit. Joseph was a good man and did not want to embarrass Mary in front of everyone. So he decided to quietly call off the wedding. While Joseph was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord came to him in a dream. The angel said, Joseph, the baby that Mary will have is from the Holy Spirit. Go ahead and marry her. Then after her baby is born, name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So the Lord's promise came true. Just as the prophet had said, a virgin will have a baby boy and he will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. After Joseph woke up, he and Mary were soon married, just as the Lord's angel had told him to do. But they did not sleep together before her baby was born. Then Joseph named him Jesus. Jesus, Emmanuel, God is with us. For many Christians, this statement serves as the foundational truth we celebrate as a key underpinning of the entire Christmas season. Christmas is a time to celebrate the incarnation of the Lord God Almighty, who became flesh in the person of a baby boy named Jesus who was born in a stable in the city of Bethlehem. Jesus, fully divine and at the same time, completely human. Across America today, you will find beautifully wrapped gift boxes 
under brightly lit Christmas trees. During Christmas, the air seems lighter, people are friendlier and happier, and even strangers do not mind sending glad tidings your way through the shouts of Merry Christmas or Feliz Navidad. It is a time that warms our hearts and we become generous with our gift giving. As believers in Christ and as hearers and doers of his holy word, we receive a gift that exceeds the dimensions of any gift wrapped box or container known to mankind. First, we receive the gift of salvation through the savior that was born to take away the sins of the world and to reconcile the world back to God the Father. We receive this gift because God is a God of compassion. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It is through God's son, Jesus, that we receive the gift of salvation. With the gift of salvation, we receive joy and peace. Joy that is unspeakable and a peace that surpasses all understanding. Although he is the greatest gift, Jesus, Emmanuel, came bearing other gifts as well. One of those gifts is the gift of the Holy Spirit that indwells all believers. This precious gift is on full display in the form of the fruit of the Spirit that is manifested in our lives. The fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So who is this God that gives such gifts? As children of the highest God, we have come to understand that our God is a triune God. In other words, our almighty God is a Trinity. One God, yet three different persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is omnipotent. He is all power and his power is infinite and limitless. He can do anything but fail. God is omniscient. He is all knowing, therefore nothing escapes him. He is aware of your past, your present and your future and nothing takes him by surprise. His knowledge is total. He knows all there is to know and all there is to be known. God is omnipresent. He is capable of being everywhere at the same time. His divine presence encompasses the whole of the universe. He does not change. He is immutable. His compassions fail not, and he is the same today as yesterday and forevermore. Therefore, when our world comes tumbling down around us, we are not shaken because we know that God is in control and he holds his children in his hand. How do I know he holds us in his hand? Because he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. And when we keep our hearts and minds stayed on him, he gives us deep down joy and peace that passes all understanding. Jesus, the Christ, caused the lame to walk and the blind to see. He turned water into wine and he made sick folk well. He stilled the storm and raised the dead to life. And it's the same person who leads us besides the still waters and feeds us from green pastures. He keeps food on our tables and clothes on our backs. He brings our wayward sons and daughters home. He bears our burdens and helps us to forget our pain and sorrows. All of this lets me know he holds us in, our, in his hands. Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving because he makes us new creatures when we accept him as his, our savior. 
as new creatures, we are adopted in God's family and we become his children, become children of the king. God enters into covenant with us and we become his brides. In addition to that, he makes us partakers of his promise and a fellow heir with him. He declares us to be righteous. Therefore, as the salt of the earth, we can be a witness to his greatness and his goodness. God's glorious gift that keeps on giving started with the birth of Jesus on that glorious night when the heavenly angels announced his presence to the shepherds. He kept on giving in his earthly ministry that began at the age of 30. After completing his ministry in three short years, he was arrested, brought before Pilate and condemned to hang on a tree. Not as a beautifully decorated Christmas ornament, but as a beaten, bloodied and battered sacrifice for all mankind. He was beaten beyond recognition. He was crucified, he died and was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the grave with all power in his hand. He ascended into heaven and now sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and for me. The gift of our savior Jesus was not a gift to put under a tree, but instead was a gift on a tree as he became the perfect sacrifice and atonement of our sins. It is through the shed blood of Jesus and your acceptance of Jesus as your Lord and Savior that you can receive the gift that keeps on giving. This gift is wrapped like no other. The gift of salvation comes wrapped in the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. And he keeps on giving us power to live in obedience to God's word. A gift that keeps on giving to each of us like no other because the Holy Spirit gives us his fruits. Every day he gives us God's agape love that he shared abroad in our hearts, along with joy unspeakable and a peace that passes all understanding. Then he gives us patience, like the patience that he would, that was given to Job, gentleness and goodness that follows us all the days of our lives. And if that weren't enough, he keeps on giving us faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yes. Jesus gives us hope and a future. Even when we fail, his gift of love forgives us, picks us up, turns us around, and puts our feet on solid ground and on higher ground. In short, Jesus the Christ, the son of almighty God, is the gift that keeps on bringing other gifts. So my brothers and sisters, our call to action today is to share the gift of God's love. Tell someone today, God loves you and so do I. I wish each and every one of you on this call today a very Merry Christmas. Celebrate your gifts. Amen. <laughs> Amen, amen, Lady Marilyn. Ooh, the gift. Jesus brings gift and he keeps on giving and giving and giving. So thank you so much for giving of your gift to us and sharing God's word. We are so delighted. And so that means we got to keep doing exactly what Jesus does for us. And as you said in our call to action, we too have to keep on giving and give, especially the love of God. Share it with yes. someone today, the love of God. Thank you all so much. God bless you as we kick off this Christmas week sharing God's love at Christmas time. God bless you all. Shalom.
God bless you. God bless you. Great yeah. job. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, 